Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Coach Drink, the Missouri Tigers wrapping up their spring game this Saturday afternoon in Dill 1. Felt so good to have a little college football back, but more importantly, a Missouri team that Dill, we were high on heading into the 2023 season. Not that high on them, but this Missouri team heading into 2024, I'm not going to make that same mistake. This is a Missouri team that checks a lot of boxes in terms of what you're looking for from a team that can compete for an SEC championship, that can make a run in the college football playoffs. want to dive into what we saw in our takeaways from this spring game for the Missouri Tigers. Really excited to get into this one. Before we do, and as always, just want to say thank you to you guys. A massive shout out to the Missouri Tiger fans. This was a program we talked about a ton. During that 2023 season, we talked a lot about as Coach Drink made a lot of moves in the transfer portal in the month of January. Cannot thank you guys enough for rocking with the fellas. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. More importantly, would love to hear some of your takeaways as well in the comment section. Dill, I'm going to give you the tea box here, and I guess we'll, we'll start it with this. Your biggest takeaway from this Missouri spring game, what you got to say? I think it was the new defensive lineman. I mean, Chris McClellan played the way exactly the way I would have hoped yeah. to see him play. Very active, had a good a couple of good pass rush reps, had a couple of nice tackles, especially just using his hands, getting off blocks and playing with good leverage. I mean, when he does that consistently, he's really, really good. At Florida, unfortunately, you didn't see it enough. Missouri, if they can get that out of him, he'll be dominant. And then Darius Smith coming in and looking like he'll be that. He'll be that alpha dog in that pass rush room, I, yeah. I got to think. I mean, he looks so good. Looked a little more fluid than maybe some of the other defensive ends who have passed through Missouri who have played really good football, but big, long, really athletic. I mean, I, I'm really excited about what he might be. And, again, you don't want to take everything away from a spring game, but he had some really nice pass pass rush reps, and he just kind of looks the part at the end of the day. New, new defense coordinator Corey Batoon ha has some dogs rushing on the edge. And I, I want to echo that. That was – when one of the you talk about this Missouri team, there are a lot of boxes checked for this Missouri Tigers team, right? You got Brady Cook, one of the best returning quarterbacks, not only in the SEC, but the country. Luther Burden, for my money, name me a better wide receiver in college football. Really good tackle play, which we'll get into in a little bit. Did a lot of boxes checked. One of the questions that we had was, all right, how does this defensive line going to shake out for Missouri we kind of got our answer, right? I thought Darius Smith, he just looked different. Chris McClellan played with the consistency that we wanted to see him have from the Florida Gators. Dill, I'll give two other shout outs. Johnny Walker Jr., guy that we knew was good for Missouri last year. Joe Moore, and I'll put my hand up and say, wasn't too familiar with Joe Moore. Didn't see him a ton for Missouri in 2023. <laughs> he looked phenomenal this week or th this afternoon for the Missouri Tigers. And you kind of look at that room. I mean, Zion Young, I don't know that he necessarily flashed. Say it's obviously only one game in a spring, but a guy from, as a Michigan fan, watched a lot of at Michigan State, he really won. like his game, think yeah. he fits in with that big physical defensive end kind of that Missouri's typically like. And then you look Joe Moore like kind of on the shorter side. Maybe he doesn't look like everyone else in the room, but kind of with you. I mean, he was playing really good, looked athletic, was using his hands as much as he doesn't maybe have that premier length was getting out there and extending. I mean, he what he does is play with low pads, man. He is that speed to power getting inside of tackles. Like he has some serious power in those hands and kind of just putting tackles right into the lap of quarterbacks. I am a really big fan of what this Missouri defensive line and specifically that pass rush can look like. Now going to my biggest takeaway, it was the secondary. Again, if you were to go through this Missouri team and say, all right, we have a lot of boxes checked. One of the questions that I think a lot of fans have is, all right, you're replacing not only Blake Baker, who did a phenomenal job with this Missouri defense, but you're replacing two of the best cornerbacks in the country in Rackestra and Abrams Drain. And Dill, this secondary looked phenomenal this afternoon. Not a lot of space, not a lot of separation. You saw defensive coordinator Corey Batum want to play a lot of man coverage. Not a lot of separation created by the wide receivers. And we have to shout out the newcomer, Dill and Kai that we've been banging the table for since his true freshman year in 2022, Torino Pride Jr., uh, that play uh, down the sideline for the interception. But not only that, he just looked the part as kind of that alpha cornerback on the boundary. You sprinkle in guys who are coming back, and Joseph Charleston, Dalen Carnell. I look at this secondary and say, I, I don't know how much of a drop-off that we're going to see from what was an excellent secondary in 2023. 
you know, that was a great unit, but I, I think you're right. I mean, you look both units, frankly, whichever team, black and and gold or whatever it yeah. was, but they both played really good. They were all sticky, and, and you just kind of saw that. That's kind of hard, I feel like, at times in the spring games, especially when there is probably more of that communication where the offense is – I mean, you're running routes. There is an element of being communicative, but a lot of it is athleticism. I mean, being, being able to play that fluid, that smooth, and that much like kind of – under control for that secondary in a spring game, two units deep. I mean, you really like what you see because you're right. At the end of the day, you had to replace two day one, day one, day two type cornerbacks. Yeah, and, and I, I thought they they looked apart. And again, that, those were probably the two biggest questions that I had for this Missouri team. And I thought largely they were answered. Now to finish off the conversation on the defensive side of the football, the linebacker spot. I mean, it's hard to evaluate because they weren't tackling to the ground. But I thought Corey Flag, a guy that. I think is has a good shot at starting for this Missouri program. He played a ton of football for the Miami Hurricanes. Thought he was really try, starting to, you know, find his stride for the Miami Hurricanes during that 2023 year. Like what they have at linebacker. Now going to the offensive side of the football, it was a windy day. It was, I think even Coach Drink said it at halftime, a little bit of a sloppy day. You had Brady Cook working with the wide receiver twos. You had the wide receiver ones working with the backup quarterbacks. So it. From a communication and chemistry standpoint, they're probably left to be a little was left to be a little desired. That being said, I didn't have many question marks about yeah, what questions that I didn't, yeah, I didn't. I didn't have many question marks about Brady Cook and Luther Bird and Theo Weiss, Mookie Cooper. I will say Marquise Johnson, Joshua Manning. I, I'm really excited for those guys. I don't know how Joshua much they're gonna, Manning is really good. I don't know how much they're going to play for the Missouri Tigers in, in 2024, but I thought they looked very, very good. The biggest question I had was on the offensive line and specifically at that left tackle spot where you have to replace another NFL dude in Javon Foster, Caden Green. The upside on this kid, we talked about him when he transferred to Missouri, extremely high. He wanted to come to Missouri to play tackle. Thought he looked really good at left tackle. Though that's another box checked in my mind. Yeah, and that was going to be a big one because you're obviously returning that right side, including the center. But at the end of the day, Armand Membu, I don't think you necessarily want to see him playing left tackle. I mean, he's more of that power offensive tackle probably not at like not have the traits that you want to see necessarily in your like nfl net left tackle but he's gonna be a damn really good guard. guard he's gonna be a damn good guard at the nfl he's gonna be a really good guard and he's a really good right tackle at the college level but again you didn't necessarily know who was going to be able to slot that left tackle or slot in at left tackle and caden green you kind of figured when he came from oklahoma it was about being a tackle i think that's what yeah. he wanted to play i think there was a little friction there in Oklahoma because that's not where he was playing. I mean, he looked like what you wanted to see. I thought did a really good job versus some really good defensive ends as we just kind of expounded on. But look physically in control. Like look like can get get back, get depth in his his pass sets. I just thought he looked like what you want would have wanted to see from him to be that kind of be like, okay, we're fine there. We're gonna be okay. Yeah. And you start looking at this offense, you say, all right, quarterback, wide receivers, two really, really good tackles. And again, when you're evaluating these college teams, and part of the reason we were so high on Missouri last year was there's not a lot of holes in this depth chart. Like name me other college programs that are going through spring practice and don't have a glaring need at quarterback or a wide receiver at our offensive tackles, the three most important spots on your roster. I don't have many questions about Missouri in those spots. Now, couple of the newcomers that I want to touch on real quick, the running back spot. I We said this when both of them committed in the transfer portal. Marcus Carroll, more of that back. And I think what I think Coach Drink said, kind of like Tyler Beatty and Roundtree, and I probably would agree, right? Marcus Carroll, a little bit more of your bigger back, the guy that you want between the tackles, and Nate Noel, kind of that firecracker, the guy that has some wheels. And you saw the flashes of the juice that Nate Noel has. I am – extraordinarily excited about this team. I think the the vibes, I'm a vibe guy, vibe check. The, the vibes are high during spring practice, and you can tell this team, I think after last year, beating Ohio State in the bowl game, they believe that they're one of the premier teams well, in college frankly, football. You talk about like checking box. I mean, I think Missouri is kind of getting towards that spot where, I mean, you're not checking necessarily looking to check boxes like there's something unchecked. It's about getting past, like getting to that Georgia level where yeah. it's, Okay, we're really good at we're we're really good at every spot, but we almost got to be perfect at every spot if Missouri's going to take the next step. Because frankly, that's kind of where they're at. I mean, if yeah. it's if they don't win an SEC title, I think that's probably disappointing. And frankly, that's that's where you want to be as a college football program. It's 
it's not about just having one signature win over a Tennessee or a Georgia. It's about, I mean, Drinkwitz is getting that program to being where SEC championship and national championship contenders. That's what that that's the expectation. So it's they're going to have their boxes checked for sure. It's just going to be how good can we make every spot and can every spot kind of be more like elite rather than just good. Yep, and I I think they're getting there. I was again. It's you don't want to overanalyze what we saw during the spring game, but. I think the Missouri fans should be really feeling good about what we yeah, saw. This that's afternoon. like just going back to last year. I mean, like they, they were playing the way like they physically looked on the part with everyone else, with all the big boys, Ohio state, Georgia, I yeah. mean, they're right there. It's, I don't think you need to do that much more extrapolating anymore for this Missouri team. Cause Drinkwitz and his staff are starting to prove to me, well, we're just going to be able to reload it. We're going to be able to develop guys up through our program, use the transfer portal where we need to. And that's kind of what it looks like they're doing this year. And I, I think you had to be really, really, really nice balance between like, all right, we're going to get our guys from the high school ranks. We're going to get them developed up. And then we're also going to have guys in the transfer portal that come make this roster better. One other guy, I don't know if he shot it out. Williams Winery coming in, in the summer, we talked about the edge rushers. Wanted to give a shout out to him. He's going to be a producer for the Missouri Tigers as well. Appreciate you guys rocking with the fellas. We had a blast watching the spring game. Would love to hear from y'all in the comment section, and we'll talk to y'all later.